Right everyone, Weapon Victory here. Right, this is going to be a survival knife build. So if you want to make your own survival knife, you can follow along and hopefully you should be able to make something similar to mine. You can change the design if you want. So this blade blank is a $10 blade blank, I think it was, from Amazon.com. Amazon.com will deliver to the UK and will deliver blade blanks and knives. Uh, I think it's seven and a half inch blade. Not sure the handle length. The handle I'm going to modify is not going to be this original shape. And I was going to change the guard, but I've worked out something quite useful for this, which I'll explain later. So even this guard will be a tool in itself. So this will be a, as I mentioned, survival knife with a leather sheath that has at least one pouch that can hold a survival tin, uh, removable handle scales which remove either allen key or a screwdriver which is connected to a lanyard and then under those scales will be a survival kit, like a hollow handle survival kit. So yeah I'm going to get down to it now, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do first, I may shape the handle first but yeah whatever's coming up you'll see. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to mark out for some jimping now this jimping has to be quite high because when the guard is on obviously your thumb has to go over it but I think it would be handy to have a bit of jimping on the back here uh, to help levering down so even though the guard will stick out so I'm just going to mark some lines here and then file between those lines basically do that a bit more later so what I need to do now this is just a coincidence of the shape of the blade so I picked this blade because it was cheap not not the shape really but I've noticed there's a little groove here which I think if I take that in a little bit more and make sure the edges are nice and flat that could be a perfect ferro rod striker Right, so I'm going to deepen this little groove slightly. So we've got the jimping done, the little ferro striker, but as I say, I'm, I would assume any part of this spine would do that. So I want to get rid of these lumps and bumps, they're not really in the right place for me. So I'm going to leave this bit, but here and here I'm going to flatten it down. When I work out the distance of where I want the scales to come to, I'm going to change the shape of this bottom bit as well. So it's like a sort of pry bar kind of shape, or a very very big uh, flathead screwdriver. Right, I've got my gas mask on so you may struggle to hear me. Where this angle is here, I'm going to go straight across and replicate that angle on the other side. So I may try this with a hacksaw, otherwise I will need a angle grinder to cut across there. Cut my birch multiplex down slightly thinner, took a couple of layers off. This will probably still be too thick though. Um, I'll probably need to take a little bit more off. But I don't want to take too much off because we won't be able to get much in the handle otherwise. So what I need to do now is square off this end and then I need to mark on the wood shape of the handle scales and cut them out so 
Right, so I've cut the slabs to the basic shape I want them. I still, still need cutting off a bit at the top and the bottom, but they're about right. So what we need to do now is mark for the holes. We're not going to use the middle hole, we're only going to use the top and the bottom one. So get your scales in the right place. Mark the top hole and the bottom hole. And we're going to drill a hole to put the bolts through. Now the bolts I'm not sure what I'm going to use. I think I'm going to just use normal bolts. So they'll have to be recessed in slightly and the nuts will have to be recessed in a bit. Don't forget to put a piece of wood behind your piece of wood you're drilling so you don't blow it all out. So you should have your scales on roughly now. So what we can do, we can shape them down to the metal on both sides. Make sure you cover up your guard as well because you don't want to scratch it because you want this as good as possible. So first thing I do is sand that down, sand that down, work out where I want them cut off and then we can recess in the bolts and start actually shaping the handle. Right, so I've shaped the basic handle shape and I've thinned them down ever so slightly by about one or two bits, if that makes sense, you know the little sections. So now I'm going to start cutting in for the hole to put a little survival kit in. Now, this ain't going to be very big, but you'll be surprised what you can get in these. You'll definitely be able to get fishing kit, sewing kit, some matches, any of the little items that you get in survival knives, you'll be able to get in here, either side. Make sure it's nice and secure. Right, so I've done the hole on both sides. Now I need to countersink so the heads will go in under the surface of the handle. And on the other side, you want a hole slightly smaller than the nut so you have to hammer the nut into the hole so that the nut won't fall out so you don't lose it. So the easiest way to get this in the actual wood, put the nut through, but don't do it right up because if you peen over the head of that bolt you won't be able to get it open. Put it on, put it in a vise. And now you've got some countersunk nuts that won't come out because they're actually hammered into the wood. So I've got our handle on, now I'm going to cut these, cut the end of the bolts off. Don't forget to, once you've cut them off, take them out and just chamfer off over the edges and then I'm going to shape the handle. So first thing to do, cut the end of these off, these nuts, the bolts. Are... Right, so I've got the handle to a degree that I'm happy with it. I may sand the metal separately so it's a bit more shiny. Because it's a bit scratched at the minute. That's essentially the handle done, apart from colouring it now. Whichever colour you want. I may just do mine a brown stain. May, depending on if there's any wobble on your guard, you may want to put a little bit of leather or a thin piece of something 
above it. So the next thing I'll be doing is lacquering the handle and then when the lever comes I'll be doing a sheath that has a pouch for a survival tin and possibly some other things, a ferro rod, stuff like that. Oh, and I still need to do the little screwdriver for opening the handle. Right, so I said I was going to use this as a tool as well. I was trying to think of things it could be, and then I suddenly realised the perfect thing this could be would be a signal mirror. Because signal mirrors is just a, sh a shiny surface with a hole in it, basically. You look through the hole towards the sun, put your hand so that the light is reflecting onto your hand, and then you move it onto whatever you want to signal. So you want to keep one side of this very shiny. So I'm going to polish up one side very shiny and then I'm going to spray it with some lacquer. Hopefully it shouldn't dull then. On the back side that goes against the handle, with some letter punches, I'm going to write aim at sun, then hand. Just as a basic instructions, just in case you know you forget how to do it or something. You know, you never know. But it just gives you some basic um tips of what to do. So. so you probably won't be able to see this very well with this camera but that's it says at. So now I'll carry on aim at sun then hand. Right I've got a near mirror finish on this. You can see that would cast a good reflection if that was being used as a signal mirror. So now I'm going to spray a little bit of lacquer on it and hopefully that will maintain that shininess while that dries I will prepare my handles now I'm not really, still not really sure what I want these what colour I want these um, but I reckon I will do dark oak I've only got two options really, dark oak or a clear lacquer. Um, I think dark oak would look better on this with the brass. Um, really I think orange handles or something should be better for a survival knife. Hunting knife, normal handles, survival knife, you want it orange really, so you don't lose it, because you'll, you'll be using that knife to survive. Right, that's the knife pretty much done. So, handle scales are done. Just need to put it all together. I've got a little bit of leather that I may need to go above the guard. It'll protect it in a way. It'll be smaller than the whole diameter of the guard anyway. The guard has been lacquered. So I'm gonna put it all together now. And that's the knife done. And then the next parts are putting the survival kit in the handle and making the sheath and having all the bits to it. Right, so there you go. That is my survival knife. Or the beginnings of it anyway. So what I still need to do is find the stuff inside the handle and make a sheath that has the ability to carry accessories. But the knife, I'm overall happy with it. It's got a couple of features then. So it's blade, ferro striker, signal mirror, handle that can hold a small survival kit and a pry bar pommel with a lanyard hole. So a couple more features than a standard knife. It's a decent thickness. Not sure how thick that is but looks at least four mil. Yeah I'm very happy with that. It's quite a nice comfortable knife with a decent blade. The jimping sort of works the guards in your way but it would help to you know it, it does its job. So this is as far as this video will go but don't forget to look into the next part where I show you how to put the stuff in the handle and make a nice sheath for this with a pouch and all that. Yeah, So don't forget to carry on watching because there will be some high quality footage of this. Not with this camera, this is my shed camera. I can't afford to bring out my good camera out here. But yeah, there, there you go. I'm very happy with that. There's the beginnings of my survival knife. Right, 
See you in the next bit. See you later.